The same applies to any data within a clip, say for example note information. So I've got my hi-hat here for example. If I wanted to take this hi-hat and maybe change the velocity of each individual note, when I enter the edit mode on that clip, I can see here, here are my events, I select a note and my inspector pops up with exactly where the event exists, its note value, and its velocity. So I can change velocity very quickly here. So that inspector makes microscopic editing a much simpler task. All right, so looking back at the clips here, uh, let's talk a little bit about how they function. Everything that you record in the sequence gets recorded into a clip. And the thing to know about clips is that if any data exists outside of a clip, you don't hear it. It's only what's inside of a clip that you hear. Clips themselves can be masked, which means that you can change their start or end points by clicking and dragging on these arrows here. You can also take a clip and you can nudge it. And it's just by simple key presses on your keyboard. On the Mac, it's the Apple key plus your arrows. On the PC, it's Control plus arrows. And that will allow you to nudge this clip forward or backward. If you hold down a couple of other keys, you can actually nudge the clip. And on the Mac, it's Apple and Alt. You can nudge it by ticks. So you can be very, very small increments that you're moving your clip forward or backward. Clips allow you to do things with things like automation and note recordings that makes it very easy to repeat automation moves over certain tracks. So if, for example, I have this pan that I had done on channel four, and let's say I wanted to have the same pan appear on another channel. I could go to my more parameters function and select, let's say channel five, we'll add channel five pan. Just holding down the alt key and dragging that clip repeats that clip or du duplicates it on the next channel down. So it's very simple to take that automation move and move it where you need it. In the sequencer, we've also added a couple of other new features, one of which being a pre-count, which allows you to get one bar of a count in before you start recording. The other thing that we've got is the transport track, which allows you to do things like tempo and time signature changes. This will allow you to do tempo changes that could be very gradual or very sharp changes in tempo. And the way that you do that is you draw in your clip, Select the range that you want to edit. And we'll draw in just a simple tempo change here. And this would be a gradual change from this tempo down to this point, which would be a, quite an extreme one here. We've gone up to, oh, uh, what are we at? 729 BPM. That's a bit extreme. So maybe we'll go down a little lower. And we can do that slow fade from one tempo to another. Time signature change is handled a little differently in that with time signatures, you wouldn't be doing a gradual change. You'd be doing a hard change from one meter to the next. So when you select a time, sim a time signature change and you create the clip, you get a pull down menu here. And when you click on that arrow, you get some preset selections. And then if you type in other or go to other, you can type in your own time signature. So if I wanted to go to 15 sixteenths, I could do that very quickly. And it will change the time signature of the song.